Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Today is Tuesday, January 29th, 2019. Right? I think so. So it's, so it's Taco Tuesday, right? Not Throwback Thursday. So it's Taco Tuesday, right? January 29th, 2019. Wow, we're almost at the end of the month. So anyways, um, just checking on my laundry. Still got a little bit left to go. Yeah, look. I show you the nitty gritty. I show you every single part of my life. Look, even my skeevies. So anyways, so today we're just gonna take a little walk around the hood. I gotta go to the store. I'm gonna take another route so I can show you guys around. I'm just gonna talk about whatever's on my mind and uh, just show you a little bit more about life out here in Mexico. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, so um, I'll see you guys in the next scene, all right? Let me just uh, lock up and get out of here. Hey, guys, how's it going? Um, real quick, as I was editing it, this thing, um, I realized there's something wrong with the audio during this part. So I just decided to put some... Jordan Peterson. So we're going to be taking a walk with Jordan Peterson for a while, but then I come back in and I start talking about, by the time we get to the place I want to show you, I st my audio co comes back and I'm able to talk, okay? So hang out. Just uh, bear with me. Thanks. Alrighty, guys. So uh, I'm going to strap you to my head and uh, I'm going to take you to La Plazas de las Americas. Um, it's on the way to the store I got to go to anyway. Um, it's also within the area I live, but like um, if you come out here as an American tourist or as an American um, It's a place that you might go to or hang around in. it's like where the Hyatt hotel is and like where you might rent your cars And there's like a big store. Well, you'll see anyways All right, I'm gonna strap you to my head and we're gonna head out All right, you know if you take people and I've told you this and you expose them Voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of you know that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals Their self-defined goals if you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of they get stronger and You don't know what the upper limits to that are because you might ask yourself like if for ten years if you didn't avoid Doing what you knew you needed to do by the def by your own definitions right within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that What would you be like? Well, you know there are remarkable people who come into the world from time to time and there are people who do find out over Decades long periods what they could be like if they were who they were if they said if they spoke their being forward and they get stronger and stronger and stronger and we don't know the limits to that we do not know the limits to that and so you could say well in part perhaps the reason that you're suffering unbearably can be left at your feet because you're not everything you could be and you know it and of course that's a terrible thing to admit and it's a terrible thing to consider but there's real promise in it right because it means that Perhaps there's another way that you could look at the world and number, another way that you could act in the world So what it would reflect back to you would be much better than what it reflects back to you now And then the second part of that is well Imagine that many people did that because we've done a lot as human beings We've done a lot of remarkable things and I've told you already I think before that today for example about 250,000 people will be lifted out of abject poverty and about 300,000 people attached to the electrical power grid we're making people, we're lifting people out of poverty collectively at a faster rate that's ever occurred in the history of humankind by a huge margin. And that's been going on unbelievably quickly since the year 2000. The UN had pl planned to have poverty between 2000 and 2015, and it was accomplished by 2013. So there's inequality developing in many places, and you hear lots of political agitation about that. But overall, the... The tide is lifting everyone up, and that's a great thing, and we have no idea how fast we could multiply that if people got their act together and really aimed at it. Because, you know, my, my experience is with people that we're probably running at about 51% of our capacity. Something, I mean, you can think about this yourselves. I often ask undergraduates how many hours a day you waste, or how many hours a week you waste, and the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done, that's probably four hours right there. You know, you think, well, that's 20, 25 hours a week, it's 100 hours a month, that's two and a half full work weeks, 
It's half a year of work weeks per year. And if your time is worth $20 an hour, which is a radical underestimate, it's probably more like 50 if you think about it in terms of deferred wages. If you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. And you are doing that right now. And it's because you're young, wasting $50,000 a year is a way bigger catastrophe than it would be for me to waste it because I'm not going to last nearly as long. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be, who knows how much more efficient? 10 times more efficient. 20 times more efficient. That's the Pareto distribution. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. It's completely, it's off the charts. Well, and if we all got our act together collectively, and stop making things worse, because that's another thing people do all the time. Not only do they not do what they should to make things better, they actively attempt to make things worse because they're spiteful or resentful or arrogant or deceitful or, or homicidal or genocidal or all of those things all bundled together in an absolutely pathological package. If people stopped really, really trying just to make things worse, we have no idea how much better they would get just because of that. So there's this weird dynamic that's part of the existential system of ideas between human vulnerability, social judgment, both of which are, 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 are major causes of suffering, and the failure of individuals to adopt the responsibility that they know they should adopt. And that's the thing that's interesting too, is that, and like one of the, another thing I've often asked my undergraduate classes is, you know, there's this idea that, that people have, that people have a conscience. And you know what the conscience is, it's, it's this feeling or voice you have in your head just before you do something that you know is stupid, telling you that probably you shouldn't do that stupid thing. You don't have to listen to it, strangely enough, but you go ahead and do it anyways, and then of course exactly what the conscience told you was going to happen inevitably happens, so that you feel even stupider about it than you would if it happened by accident, because you, you know, I knew this was going to happen, I got a warning it was going to happen, and I went and did it anyways. And the funny thing too is that that conscience operates within people, and we really don't understand what the hell that is. So you might say, well, what would happen if you abided by your conscience for five years or for ten years? What sort of position might you be in? What sort of family might you have? What sort of relationship might you be able to forge? And you can be bloody sure that a relationship that's forged on the basis of who you actually are is going to be a lot stronger and more welcome than one that's forged on the basis of who you aren't. Now, of course, that means that the person you're with has to deal with the full force of you in all your ability and your catastrophe, and that's a very, very difficult thing to negotiate. But if you do negotiate it, well, at least you, you have something, you have somewhere solid to stand, and you have somewhere to live, you have a real life, and it's a great basis upon which to bring children into the world, for example, because you can have an actual relationship with them instead of torturing them half to death, which is what happens in a, tremendous, a tremendously large minority of cases. Well, it's more than that too, because, and this is what I'll close with, and this is why I wanted to introduce Solzhenitsyn's writings to you, you see, because it isn't merely that your fate depends on whether or not you get your act together and to what degree you decide that you're going to live out your own genuine being. It isn't only your fate, it's the fate of everyone that you're networked with. And so, you know, you think, well, there's 9 billion, 7 billion people in the world. We're going to peak at about 9 billion, by the way, and then it'll decline rapidly. But 7 billion people in the world, and who are you? You're just one little dust moat among that 7 billion, and so it really doesn't matter what you do or don't do, but that's simply not the case. It's the wrong model, because you're at the center of a network. You're a node in a network. Of course, that's even more true now that we have social media. You'll, you, you'll know a thousand people, at least over the course of your life, and they'll know a thousand people each, and that puts you one person away from a million, and two persons away from a billion. And so that's how you're connected, and the things you do they're like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripples move outward, and they affect things in ways that you can't fully comprehend. And it means that the things that you do and that you don't do are far more important than you think. And so if you act that way, of course, the terror of realizing that is that it actually starts to matter what you do. And you might say, well, that's better than living a meaningless existence. It's better for it to matter. 
But I mean, if you really asked yourself, would you be so sure if you had the choice? I can live with no responsibility whatsoever. The price I pay is that nothing matters. Or I can reverse it and everything matters. But I have to take the responsibility that's associated with that. It's not so obvious to me that people would take the meaningful path. You now when you say, well, nihilists suffer dreadfully because there's no meaning in their life and they still suffer. Yeah, but the advantage is they have no responsibility. So that's the payoff, and I actually think that's the motivation. Say, well, I can't help being nihilistic. All my belief systems have collapsed. It's like, yeah, maybe. Maybe you've just allowed them to collapse because it's a hell of a lot easier than acting them out. And the price you pay is some meaningless suffering, but you can always whine about that and people will feel sorry for you. And you have the option of taking the pathway of the martyr, so that's a pretty good deal, all things considered. Especially when the, when the alternative is to bear your burden properly and to live forthrightly in the world. Well, what Solzhenitsyn figured out, and so many people in the 20th century, it's not just him, even though he's the best example, is that if you live a pathological life, you pathologize your society. And if enough people do that, then it's hell. Really. Really. And you can read the Gulag Archipelago if you have the fortitude to do that, and you'll see exactly what hell is like. And then you can decide if that's a place you'd like to visit. Or even more importantly, if it's, a light, if it's a place you'd like to visit and take all your family and friends. Because that's what happened in the 20th century. So I'd just like to show you this area here. You know, for anyone that's interested. Uh, we were at the Hyatt. I have not been in here, nor do I really plan to come in here. Um, that's the famous OXO where you can do all kinds of shit. Um, chilies for those out there, those adventurous eaters. For any adventurous eaters out there, we got chilies. Um, there's a bunch of stores out that way too. Like um, just down this street right here, there's like health food stores, all kinds of shit. You rental cars. This is another hotel, another big major hotel. Inside there's like a mall. Um, again, this is just a fucking Hyatt, whatever. They just came from the airport, see? This just got here. You know what? I'm, 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 I'll show you around in there for a minute. Might as well. But see, look, this is the ni real nice hotel, as you guys can see. You guys probably like fucking stay there. So Walmart's over there, where I gotta go. There's a street, you see, the street right here. It's a roundabout. touristy stuff in a five-star hotel setting you know so um, as you guys can see you know all this stuff all this stuff is also readily available within the city, no problem. And then, you know, out here is just like the comfort and safety of the hotel, the comfort and safety. But as you guys can see, it's just you walk outside where I live and you already see like it's a different neighborhood. It's a different, um, you know, it's the same neighborhood, but I'm just saying it's like, See, look, like, look at like those t-shirts, you know, way more expensive in here, um, and so on and so forth. Just, I see a lot of jewelry, a lot of high-end stuff in here. Hopefully you guys can see. I just noticed it might be a little dark in here. But, um, so this is like their version of Sears or JCPenney. Um, right over here in front of me. So I've been to plenty of these up in the north part of the city. They're like way bigger and more awesomer. But here you probably find stuff, you know, for Americans. Yeah, I can see, you know, 
it's more like a hotel. You know, where you, you know, fucking laptop bags, you know, just certain things that you already know if you travel. The same old shit. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot of clothes, a lot of stuff. You can plan trips out here. There. Here, let's take this thingy. Alrighty. And we're out. And that's it. So we, 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 I didn't give you the whole trip, but you guys can figure it out. Money exchange. You know, I, 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 I wonder why these, a lot of these in places don't have like Bitcoin and shit and uh, crypto. You would think, right? You would think I can exchange crypto in one of these places. Huh. The famous, famous, I think that's a Holiday Inn over there. Holiday Inn, see? But if you guys are coming out here, um, I suggest like staying in the Airbnb. I really, really highly suggest staying in the Airbnb. Um, you will be, dis I don't know, to me, um, it was just like, a, you, could, you can't even compare. You know, staying in an Airbnb as opposed to staying in a, in a fucking hotel. Um, because my friends have come out here and um, I've checked out the hotels. I've stayed in a hotel with a friend. And uh, yeah, long story short, um, local friend. <laughs> Let me shut up. Anyways, long story short, um, it's just not the same, man. All right, I got to cross over here. Fuck, should have done that earlier. But, um, well, fuck it. Let me just come out here and enjoy the sights for a minute. I'm showing you guys anyway. So, yeah, so look, that's the same place we were just in right now. This is like another way out. Um, but this is like super fancy, fancy, fancy. You stay in, like, if you want to stay in a hotel like this back in the States, holy shit, man, are you paying money? So, and it's the same kind of stuff here, but you're not really paying an arm and a leg. Um, over there is the Walmart. Um, as you guys have seen it before a bunch of times. Um, I usually come through there. That's Paseo Montejo. It keeps going all the way out that way. Um, and yeah, we're just doing the touristy stuff today, guys. So yeah, I'm about to end the show soon. I'm about to end the program because I got to get to in today's episode or what have you. All right, let's do this. Slow as fuck. So, there's like a tourist thing there, you know, if you want any kind of tourist info, they got you. All right. Well, all right, guys. Well, uh, today's episode is a little weird. Today's episode was just hanging out with me, walking around my neighborhood for a little bit, um, checking the sights. Um, not really much to talk about. I mean, I mean, sure, there's a million things to talk about. You already know, you know, Venezuela, what's happening all over the fucking world right now. Um, but it's like, fuck, I gotta take a break too. Um, we all gotta take a fucking breather, otherwise we're gonna just go crazy, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, um, tomorrow I'll be back 1,000%. For sure, as you already know, we got the live uh, YouTube uh, live stream that we do every Wednesday morning, and we got, you know, we'll be covering a lot of news, a lot of stuff tomorrow, talking about all kinds of shit as usual, um, and that's it. You know, I think we'll just pick it up tomorrow. Last night was great on Twitch. I really appreciate you guys all joining me. I really appreciate you guys joining me right now and every day, and I really just love you guys and appreciate you guys and think you guys are the, you know, the fucking best. So, all right, guys. Without further ado, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here because, um, yeah, like I said, it's uh, I, I still got a lot of stuff to do. I got my laundry. I gotta get some food. I gotta cook. I'm gonna make some beans. I'm gonna make some chicken. I gotta still do the clothes. I gotta go live stream tonight and so on and so forth. Oh, there's some red ants here. Let me get out of here. All right, guys. Well, 
Thanks again for joining me today and uh, let me cross the street before I have to wait again. Alright guys, All right. you might as well just join me. Alright, well, thanks again. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. And I'll see you motherfuckers later tonight and tomorrow and uh, every other motherfucking day as usual. Peace.